Hello everybody and welcome back to the testing grounds. Today what we have for you is an air and liquid disinfection system. A way to remove germs from whatever gases or liquids that you have lying around your base. Uh, but it's more, it's less of a build and more of an excuse to show off proper piping and ventilation techniques in oxygen not included. And this is particularly important as you progress in the game because uh, lag becomes a significant issue at some point in the game. And most lag in the game is caused by pathfinding, mainly of your duplicates, which can sometimes have some very, you know, a wide variety of choices available to them uh, when deciding how to move about your base. But it also applies to liquids and gases. Liquids and gases have their own sort of pathfinding uh, uh, system. And if you build your base such that that pathfinding system is constantly being invoked, you're going to run into issues of lag. And so the principle that you want to follow is that every packet of gas, every packet of liquid uh, that's traveling down a pipe or a duct, at every single point in time should know what it should be doing. It should have a simple set of rules for how it should behave. Uh, usually that means having every input connect to one output and not just having um, inputs and outputs merge together or link together in a way that can be really confusing to a lot of, a lot of uh, the gas travel and liquid travel in the system. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take an, ex an example here and look at, say, this oxygen system, right? We have the packets of gas being sort of created or taken from the air uh, at these gas pumps. And then they travel down this system and distribute themselves across all these vents uh, in my base. Let's go ahead and delete some of the air in one of these rooms, maybe two of the rooms. That way you can kind of get an idea of, of how the system flows and works, right? So first off, one of the most important mechanics to understand is that any time a packet of gas or packet of liquid reaches uh, some sort of structure that has an input slash output, right? Like a, a bridge, for example, it has an input side and an output side. The way that it works is that the gas packet, if it can, will always take the input. It has a priority to take, go across whatever that input is, enter into whatever the input is, if it can. If it can't, then it continues on. And on the flip side, gas packets that aren't coming in from an output have priority. So if we look at this system, right? Right now we have uh, packets of oxygen of 500 grams, which is the maximum that a gas pump can, can produce, uh, being merged together with gas packets from this side, right? So this these gas packets are coming in, there's 500 grams, they can make it over to this side, and therefore they do. Now the system becomes a little bit backed up, and we see that this side is taking priority while these guys are waiting. These guys are waiting to merge into this lane. Now, if we had another pipe going down, they would continue on their way if they couldn't merge over, right, and go and do something else. But now they're just sitting around waiting to merge. And so this system is on almost all the time, and this system is, is off a very large fraction of the time. When it goes down here, we have these uh, storage facilities just linked up in series. Right, so here's the output, here's the input, straight line between them, very simple. And then we have sort of the same priority system over here. A gas packet approaches, it reaches this gas bridge, it says, if I can, I want to cross this gas bridge. If I can't, I want to continue on my way. It knows exactly what it should be doing. And there's no just straight up intersections, junctions, where the gas pipe could go either way, or the gas in the packet could go either way and be perfectly fine. It always has its priority dictate, dictated to it by gas bridges, by storage facilities, by whatever. Anything that has this input and output icon, right? anything that has an input icon or an output icon is going to follow these same rules, the same logic, right? Uh, the output icon is only gonna output if there, if it can, right? It's gonna have priority underneath everything else. The input uh, is always going to have priority over anything else, right? It's gonna take in as many packets as it can, and if it can't take any more packets, it'll send them along its way. And basically, this sort of setup ensures, it, it looks a little bit weird, right? We haven't just directly connected everything together, which would look a little bit more straightforward, but this keeps things very simple for the gas and means that the pathfinding system for the gas in this game isn't being invoked very often at all, right? To the extent it's being invoked, it's being invoked just to, to know these rules, right? That if I can, I want to merge over. If I can't, I continue on, 
right? And I only can merge over if there's room. That sort of thing is what's being followed here. Likewise, for my plumbing, it looks a little bit weird, I know, to have all these gas bridges, but this is basically splitting up a single central line of water such that um, it always knows where to go, right? It's gonna supply this toilet first, then this toilet, then this sink, then the sink, and so on and so forth for uh, this system down here, and then for these showers. Each of these, each of these things that I have in here has a priority, so to speak, in the system. If there was a limited amount of water coming in, you would know which of these were going to get water first, right? Because of the way the system is set up. This means that at no point does any of this liquid have to guess about where it should go or make a decision about where it should go. It's all being dictated for it. So to show off these mechanics in a more uh, complete way, here is a build that disinfects gas for you. Let's go ahead and take, uh, Let's fill this area over here with some fresh polluted gas. We'll say natural gas. And we're going to give it uh, a lot of zombie spores, which are a particularly nasty germ to have here. Just crank this way up. Tons of gas. Boom. And we'll do this for good measure. So this is a really germy gas, right? It's going to start decaying because zombie spores uh, don't grow on natural gas, they just kind of sustain themselves a little bit on natural gas. Um, but this is a really germy gas, and we're going to use three different chambers of chlorine to disinfect it. Let's take a look at the ventilation, because that's really what a lot of this is about, right? We have the gas coming in, and it reaches this gas shutoff valve. And if this gas shutoff valve is allowing gas in, then the gas will want to cross this gas shutoff valve first. This takes priority. If the shutoff valve is closed though, the gas is gonna continue on its way until it reaches the ne next gas shutoff valve and where it encounters the same problem until finally it goes all the way to here, right? And then says, can I go in this last gas shutoff valve? If the answer is no, then it just sits and waits in the pipe, right? Pretty simple. After it's gone through that gas shutoff valve, it is sent over to storage. There's a bridge here, which we'll talk about later, but it's basically a direct line. This is the output, this is the input. I just follow a direct line over here, right? And if there's any gas that wants to merge in, it's gonna have to wait for me, right? I'm just gonna go straight to the storage. So it comes in through the gas shutoff, it goes straight to storage. From storage, the output is right here, it goes out and reaches a gas shutoff valve and says, if this gas shutoff valve is open, I want to take it. And if not, I'm gonna continue on my way. On its way means it loops back to a bridge, which merges it back into the input, right? On the, the output side, if, it, if the gas shutoff valve is open, it goes out and there, here's the input, right? Output, input, nothing else in there. There's a, there's a bridge waiting to merge. These guys will have to wait their turn. If I'm going through, then these guys will have to wait right and here's my output system the whole thing is controlled by clock sensors so if i go to automation we have uh, a clock sensor right here which is controlling the output for this first chamber and the input for this third chamber right so it is active right now uh, we have a clock we have a clock sensor that is uh controlling the input of the first chamber and output of the second chamber. And then we have a clock sensor that is controlling the input of the second chamber and output of the third chamber. So at any given point in time, each of these chambers is doing one of three things. It's spending one third of its time. So if I look at this, active t activation time is uh, 0%, active duration is 33%. So it's gonna stay on for a third of the day and it's gonna turn on uh, at zero, basically. This one, Activation time 33, active dura duration 33, activation time 66, active duration 33. So what's going to happen is right now, this, this first chamber is on. So it is outputting its gas into our area over here. Now let's go ahead and clear out this chamber because I don't want to show off what happens if the system gets backed up just quite yet. Um... Common substances, vacuum, let's vacuum this out. So we can see this, this exiting, right? This one is pumping out all of its gas into this chamber right now. This is the outputting chamber. Then we have a chamber where both of the gas shutoff valves are disabled. 
And in this chamber, we basically just have the natural gas sitting around and being disinfected by the chlorine that's around it. And in this final chamber, we have gas, fresh gas being pumped in, right? And we can see that new gas coming into this chamber. So this one is just cycling. This one is emptying and it's done emptying at this point. And this one is filling up. And now uh, things change, right? Now this one is emptying, this one is cycling, and this is the one that is inputting fresh germy gas. And basically the way that the uh, game works, it takes a third of a day for chlorine to disinfect any given gas or liquid or whatever, right? It's gonna be exactly one third of a day. And so these clock sensors are, are set up so that exactly that much time is spent of the, for the gas just dwelling in these gas reservoirs. Now you might be asking, okay, I understand that, but why do you have this loop system here, right? What is, what is this all about? Why do we have this? Why can't I just delete this bridge, delete this, and just say, look, output if this thing is open, uh, and otherwise just, just stick around here. The answer is that gas in gas reservoirs will be disinfected by chlorine, but gas in gas pipes will not be. And so we have to have this loop here in order to cycle the gas that otherwise would just sit and stay in the pipes and, and uh, maintain its germs. We need to cycle that back into the gas reservoir to be disinfected. Right, and so we have this constant process of cycling the gas back in to make sure that all of the gas gets disinfected, right? That's the, the one sort of trick to this system. We'll get to how you can get around this trick in a couple ways and the disadvantages of using this to get around the trick in a little bit. Uh, but for now, we can just show off the liquid system, which is basically the same thing, right? We have our liquid shutoff valves. We have our clock sensors rigged the exact same way. We have our storage here. The only thing that I've changed is that I've, I've moved the loop to loop all the way back to the very first of these liquid storage chambers, right? Because I have two of them in each of these places. Also, this is run dry. Uh, let's go ahead and I suppose to show things off, say liquids. Um, where's polluted water? Polluted water. Yeah, sure. Looks good. Uh, not zombie spores, though. Let's go with uh, food poisoning. There we go. Spawn some of this in here. Exact same thing, right? We have our whole system uh, around here. This should be changed, because this is actually going to be another thing that I want to show off. Activate if below, uh, whoops, no, there we go. Okay, so, uh, hopefully this is all still disinfected. Yeah, I think so, okay, good. <laughs> I haven't been paying attention to the system, I've just been letting it run. This liquid system operates off the exact same principle. We're having the liquid just dwell in these chambers for a third of the day, right? It's, there's a, it spends a third of its day taking in fresh liquid, it spends a third of its day disinfecting that liquid, and it spends a third of its day outputting that liquid, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, operates across the exact same principles. Um, the disadvantage that you might see in these systems is what happens if they become backed up, right? If air, if gas can't get out here, then eventually these chambers will full, will, will completely fill themselves, right? This will fill at 150 uh, kilograms. These will fill at, uh, what are these again? This is 150 kilograms, right? Yeah, 150 kilograms, and these have a max storage of five kilograms. So we have 10 kilograms of storage in these. We have 150 kilograms of storage in these, right? If we get too much in these areas though, this will back up, and what'll happen is this loop will fail, or this loop will stop recycling the gas back in because there, it won't be able to go in. Remember that this bridge means I don't have priority for getting across this side. I wanna take the bridge if I can, I wanna merge if possible, but if, there's, if there isn't space, then I'm not going to be able to merge, right? If this system backs up, then this system will back up, this won't be able to merge, and you'll be stuck with this, uh, these germs in your pipe 
that won't be getting disinfected. So the system does have a way of failing. Now there is a simple and sort of ugly way of solving that, and that's what we have over here, right? We can show this off. I have a liquid reservoir. Uh, I have a mechanized airlock underneath it, right? And uh, instead of using these shutoff valves as my way of controlling flow out of these systems, I could just use a mechanized airlock, right? Let's go to plumbing here. Right now, it's taking in liquid and it's outputting liquid because the door is underneath it. It's acting as we expect it to. If I go ahead and toggle this, we're going to see it's going to continue taking in liquid. It's fine doing that, but it won't output liquid. So, in theory, we could do this build a different way uh, and have mechanized airlocks underneath our storage areas and use them as opposed to these gas shutoff valves to control the flow because then we don't have a pipe, right? We don't have a pipe coming from this where germy water is going to get stuck, right? And not get disinfected like we do with this system over here. Um, instead, you know, we have a very direct, just basically valve right on the liquid reservoir that is, is basically created by this door. I don't do this because I think this looks ugly, and so I kind of want to illustrate an alternative to that, and that is uh, the the pressure sensor, right? I want a sensor that will will say, is this system backed up, and if so, shut everything off, and that's what I have right down here. So if I look at this system right here, nothing's flowing. Why is that? Well, I have a gas pipe element sensor here set to oxygen which says, look, there is oxygen in this pipe and therefore there's a knock gate. I want you to turn this gas shut off off, right? I don't want this gas shut off on. I want the, I want this, or I don't want gas flowing through this gas shut off is basically what it says. So what I can do though, I can say, let's go ahead and unback up this system, right? Back, common substances, vacuum, vacuum this out. So the gas starts flowing again, this gas leaves the system, and now everything continues along its way, right? We basically have a sensor that just detects whether or not this system is backed up. Is this output system full? If so, toggle something off. What we toggle off could be a lot of different things. We could be toggling off an electrolyzer room. We could be toggling off this pump. We could be toggling off a gas shutoff valve. We could be toggling off a whole power system, right? We could, depending upon whether or not there is enough gas in this room, right, we could toggle off a lot of different different things, right? So it, it, it's not just useful for controlling this system and making sure that we don't uh, back this system up. It's also something that's useful for electrolyzers, for basically anything where we care about a certain pressure being reached. How do you build this system? Well, first we throttle the flow to 999 grams per second using a gas valve. And then we have a gas valve right here, which also throttles the flow to 999 grams per second. And so in a perfect world when there's no backup here, the gas is pumped out, it reaches this gas valve, it's throttled by a very, very small amount, it continues on its way, this extra throttling doesn't matter, and then it continues on to be outputted into whatever storage system you have. In this case, just a small chamber, right? But when this gas, when this system backs up, this gas valve can't flow anymore, right? This, this area is full. And so it directs extra gas over to this system, right? And once the gas sort of backs up into the system enough to reach this gas pipe element sensor, this element sensor will toggle on and it will send a turn off signal to the gas shutoff valve. Now, of course, we don't necessarily need this earlier throttling, but we would kind of get a toggling of the system if we if we did that, right? We'd have, we'd, we'd have some problems if we didn't have this, this gas valve to throttle things just a little bit further right here. Because we'd, we'd have, at this point of throttling, we'd have 99 grams go through and we'd have one gram go out this way, right? So we would need We'd need something else to make the system work if we didn't have this gas valve here. There are ways of doing that, but this is the, the simpler one. Um, again, if we just go to fill, if I vacuum out this room again, the system unbacks up, 
this sensor says, okay, time to go back on again, and we have the flow just as usual, right? In this case, it's only 500 grams because that's the capacity of this gas pump, right? But if we had two pumps here, then it would be 1,000 grams going through, and it would sort of back up a little bit at this point, and this throttling would be necessary, right? So this is a way, this is like a, a way to build a pressure sensor. Uh, in this case, you do need to know what element of gas is flowing through these pipes. In some applications, that's not really that big of a deal, like electrolyzers, right? You know it's either hydrogen or oxygen, and depending upon where you're putting the system, you know if it's hydrogen or oxygen, right? So you could just have it set to that element. Um, but the idea can uh, be implemented in a number of other ways as well, potentially. Before I end, because the video's gone a little bit long, I just want to illustrate a really quick and dirty way of doing a lot of your gas storage setup. So a lot of times, uh, if you're not just using this sort of gas compressor room, which is a little bit exploity, you'll have a bunch of these gas reservoirs or liquid reservoirs sitting by, side by side. The real quick and dirty way is you have a line that's going to be your line in, you have a line that's going to be your line out. It's fine to have your line in look like this, right? Because the, the gas knows what it wants to do with this line in. Let's say it's approaching from the right. It hits here and says, go in here if possible, if not, continue on your way. Go in here if possible, if not, continue on your way. And does that through the entire chain of your gas reservoirs. The trick is if you just merge together, if you just had one straight pipe connecting all of your outputs, your outputs would get very confused, right? Because all of them are trying to output their stuff at the same time, and it's just gonna be pandemonium. Which direction do I go? I don't know, right? Who has priority? I don't know. What you want to do with a lot of these systems is just set it up like this, right? Just do sort of dashed lines and then connect them up with the gas bridge. And so now the system knows exactly what it's supposed to do at every point in time. Look, uh, this one's going to empty and then this one's going to empty and then the next one's going to empty, right? They, they're all just in sequence. None of, them, none of them are just saying, hey, let me in, let me in, let me in, right? Which is what would happen if you had a bunch of gas just flowing and then just connecting up with another pipe over here directly, right? Now all of them know which one, which gas packet has priority, which one gets to move first, and you don't have to constantly invoke your, uh, your, your, your pathfinding system for gas and therefore slow down your game. I think the video's gone a little bit long, but hopefully it's explained everything pretty simply, the way that priority works across the different lines. I've shown off a nice little disinfection build that works. That I, I like it mainly because it looks neat. This is probably the more efficient one to have doors controlling the, the output as opposed to a gas shutoff valve, but I don't like it because it looks a little bit ugly. But a nice little tri-chamber system for disinfecting gas, tri-chamber system for disinfecting liquids, and some basic tutorials about how to use uh, or how various piping uh, works and the priority system for piping. Hopefully that's all clear. If it's clear, in the future builds, we're going to be able to show off things like uh, electrolyzer rooms that are going to work off of these principles and, and do things like filter gases without having to use any power, right? And, and, and manage uh, your elements without having to use, having to resort to the sort of the typical things in the game. Because there are gas filters, for example, right? But those gas filters, they take power right 120 watts and uh, sometimes you just don't want to build them they're nice and compact but 120 watts is a, a reasonable amount of energy and so i'm going to show off various builds various strategies uh, that utilize these mechanics that are in the game um, and hopefully this makes everything clear okay i'm gonna cut things here and i'll catch you guys next time